parts out. What up? We are here with Dean Lewis. Yo. How's it going, man? Good, man. Thanks for Yo, having you me. Are, you are here to, to start your tour. I'm starting tonight. And yeah, this is the first date of the tour. This is the first date. We rehearsed yesterday at the El Rey and then... Uh, Tonight's the first, the first day. Yeah. Oh man, congratulations! Oh man, I'm excited. Thank you. I'm excited to like. I mean, I came out here, like I opened. You know, Brett Denon. Yeah, I did. He legend. Oh, shit, I opened really? for him. Um, I think it was like a year, basically a year ago, and so I like, I, I did the bus tour kind of with just me and my brother, and now we're doing it with like a full band and. So okay, um, so you're traveling on a bus this time. Yeah, yeah. It's like my first like proper headline US tour with like my band and my like. Like manager, tour manager, and stuff like so that. So I'm a huge fan. I love your stuff. It's really, really good. Love your stuff, man. Thank I'm interested. You. How many songs do you have? You released? Um, I've only released like I mean, I released an EP, released Be Alright, and Seven Minutes. So There's like seven songs that are got out. it. So then, and then the show is, is the show's an hour. Yeah. So, so what's up, oh, dude? It's tough. It's really tough, man. <laughs> it's like um, I can't wait. Like now, I put every time I put a song out. Like I'm really excited because I'm like. Oh, so do you have other ones in the can that well, you're playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the album's actually done. It's coming cool. out in like a month, so I can play them. But it's like I try to space it out. Like I go play a song they don't know, and then a song they do know. I a know song. the rhythm of a set list is like a thing. It's it's a thing, but it's really tough when you have no album out because you got to do it not based on rhythm as much as like let's keep their attention. You I know. know. What I mean? So it's that's and and covers as well. Um, I'm, I just do dancing in the dark. That's what oh, I do. Just Springsteen, sick. just That's like great. a standard like. And we were doing um, "Don't Look Back in Anger" by Oasis as well. Like just every now and then we cool. throw that in, and because we need we needed that extra song. So you're a Springsteen guy. Love Springsteen, man. Yeah. So interesting. Such a big fan. What? What? Uh, I mean, I just watched. Have you seen his uh, the Netflix? I thing? did. I watched the Broadway I thing. Loved it. it was really cool. Actually. It was really good. I didn't see anything quite like that. Like the way they did it. Like how he talks, and it's almost quite theatrical. And then he yeah play and. It was cool. I feel like a lot of people, my like a lot of my friends, are either like blown away by Springsteen or don't get it. I didn't get it for a long time. You know, okay, you, so explain it to someone who doesn't get it. Why Springsteen? Um, oh, I mean, I, I got it after reading this book, right? Okay. So, and I read that like I think two years ago, or th- maybe three years ago or something. Um, well, for me, right, and this might be different to other people because I tried to get into. Uh, is it Nevada? Is that the what's the um, the acoustic, the the album that he had that like I didn't really dig that yeah. album, and everyone's like, you got to listen to it, man. Like that's the one. Um, but then I listened to Dancing in the Dark. Like I've heard it, I heard it a bunch, but I really listened to it one day. I don't know why. And I looked and, and, and he says this line in the second verse, which is, you know, what, messages keep getting clearer, radios on and I'm moving around the place. I check my look in the, in the mirror. I want to change my clothes, my hair, my face. Mm. And when I, when I literally, when I heard that lyric and I saw it, I, go, I Googled it and then I read the whole like page. Wait, lyric. say it slower. Oh, like the, the lyric, lyric again? again yeah. uh, messages keep getting clearer, radio's on, and I'm moving around the place. I check my look in the mirror. I want to change my clothes, my hair, my face. Dope. And I loved how like first person it was. Like yeah. it was so like, he's just talking about being, for me, being anxious and like just like looking, walking around his room, listening to the radio. So for me, that inspired like, oh, you can write songs like that. Like it can just be literally like, you know, like for instance, my song "Be Alright." Like yeah. I look up from the ground to see your sad and teary eyes. Like it's almost the same thing. Like it's different, Ooh. but the technique. So that's what I kind of was obsessed with. I'm like, oh, you can literally just say shit. Like, <laughs> can I swear on this? Is it, like, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can literally just say shit. Like describe a scene, and it doesn't have to be like you know, like mind perfect, blow it. mind know. blowing metaphors that match the syllables and stuff yeah, like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big change. That that's what it was for me, really. And and I was reading that you recorded that song like a bunch of times. Yeah, actually, um, I actually recorded recorded it four times. Uh, and, I love um, these stories. Yeah. I need these. Yeah, well, I'm interested to hear about yours, but I'll I'll, I'll I tell need you. I need to hear this like yeah, yeah. daily yeah, yeah, as yeah, you're yeah. creating art. Whenever you hear stuff on the radio, it's always like, oh, that probably just fell out. Perfect. Yeah, you hear that all the time. Everyone goes and everyone goes, oh, like if it comes out quick, it's amazing. And it's like, yeah, but a lot of time it's like the the, the grafting, and you got to keep going. Like totally. with you, like do you? Do you, uh, like your most successful songs, do they, or not successful in the sense of commercial success or whatever, yeah. like are they ones that have come out quickly for you? Like, or are they, you, have um, you spent time? No, yeah, I'd say half and half. Half yeah. of them just fall out. Honey, I'm Good yeah. just came out literally in about two hours. Really? With another guy, me and this guy, Nolan, wrote it Just acoustic, really fast. just acoustic yeah, guitar. Yeah, guitars. Yeah. Um, usually <clears throat> the ones that are, that are really successful, 90% of it falls out. Yeah, and then the last ten percent takes like a that's true. Yeah, really yeah. Long like the time. bridge. I'll get like the the yeah. bridge lyric right. Figuring out how to get it exactly right. Um, yeah, takes a while. But yeah. so this one, did the song come out quick? Yeah, the song came out really quick, and um, then it was, but it just didn't sound like me. Like it was before I'd released Waves. I don't know if you know my. I have a song called Waves. Oh, I, I love released it. Yeah. two years ago. Totally. Yeah, and um, 
So that, and I didn't really know the sound. It was sort of like a writing demo. I didn't really know my voice even. Like if, and uh, if you listen to this demo, it like sounds, it just doesn't really sound like me. It sounds yeah. a bit like, I don't know, soft or something. And um, it didn't have the emotion and the chorus never felt like a chorus. So I basically just went and recorded it uh, with a big name producer that didn't work. I just, because yeah. I had all these opportunities to work with big producers. Which no was one cool. knows. No one no, knows. No it, one knows the answer. There's nothing behind the curtain. No, That's no, no, no. They, yeah. We're all just trying. Yeah, exactly. Nobody has, I mean, it's, so, it's more about chemistry and what works than like someone knowing it's so true. what to do. But yeah. it's scary because you think, you think like before you think, no, that guy. He, he knows if I could what, just get yeah. to this person. Yeah, he knows what to do. They know me. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and, and they might know that person who you really like, but they don't know you. Yeah. You don't know them and it's weird. And yeah. um, so we had that experience and really he's a great guy. I'm, like he was a great producer, but just didn't work out. And then um, I went back with the, what you're saying, the guys who I had chemistry with who I did Waves with and, you know, showed them the song and then we just like redid it. I ended up taking like the, the key up a little bit. Yep. Like it sounds really dumb to, I realized it really late. Like, cause I was playing it for two years, like down a key. And then one day before I went in to record the actual version, I just like went, what if I put the capo up here? And then all of a sudden the chorus felt like a chorus. The problem with this is, this is what's infuriating is that so many times you will have some, have an idea that it is special and then you will mess with it to the point where it's not special anymore. Yes, absolutely. So it's really tough to know when to stop messing yep. or when you haven't actually hit the point yet where it's like, oh, if I just move it up a hit, um, I just move it up an octave, like a, yeah, a, a key. full, a full yeah, key, yeah, yeah. then it'll have like 400 million streams. Yeah, exactly. That's all if I need I, to do. <laughs> if I only knew. But, you know, but this is the thing. So I did that and then I had um, like, and this, like I had, I have a really good team around me. Like the best, I'm like A&R guy, Mike's the man and like, like the label, my, my, uh, my managers and stuff like that. But I had a lot of people at the time going, the demo version's better, man. Like the demo version, that's the mm. version. And, uh, and, and I actually had to like. Who, so who was the engine to keep going? You? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had a few people around me, like my brother, Sean, who's with me. Like, uh, he's like my, like, he, he's a pretty good indicator of something's like good. Like he'll be like, man, isn't nah, that sick. so important? You do really you, need those people. It's so, do you have like, yeah, who's I your... mean, my manager, me and him have always from the jump been like, we're the song people. We decide what we think is good. And, and you we, trust him. And I, re I really do trust him. Yeah. And now it doesn't mean that he's never wrong. Yeah. It just means like, I really trust his ear. Yeah. And it's really led me to great places. Because if you don't, like you can get really lost in who you are as an artist. You can get super lost. Yeah. And he's he's picked some things that I wouldn't have picked that have done really, really like great. Right. So, so this, like you mean this, songs? Like, yeah, songs or, or this idea of, this is the dance of the artist thing that I think is really difficult is knowing when to let someone in and help mm -hmm. and then knowing when to just trust your gut. Yeah. That's and allowing for... The idea that like sometimes I will throw down the gauntlet and be like, this is it. And then it's not. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> See, so I'm scared do? of that. I'm I know, scared of that. but uh, you got to be okay. Yeah. I think that you have to, like like you said, you surround yourself by people that you trust and then you do the best you can. I have, I could not have said it better. Like I've actually spoken to people about this before and I'm like, you know, you have the small team, what you're saying. Like I have the few people that I trust, like manager and brother and stuff like that. And But then I have that thing that you're talking about, whereas I will say... I sort of fight all the time. Like I'm always feel like I'm fighting, like not in an aggressive way, but in a way of like, no, that's not me. No. Like, you know, be a big like opportunity sometimes for like a, maybe a feature. And I'm like, don't want to do it. Like I have to, I have to do the first album myself. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like just establish myself. And then I'm like, then I'll do that. Like I just have all these things that I are very stubborn, but I, but I also, I don't know if you're like this. Are you, I'm like that, but I'm also like, what do you think of this song? Like, what do you think of this song? Oh, I know, you know I know. What I mean? Super vulnerable at the Super same vulnerable, time. Super vulnerable, but really stubborn. I feel like the most, the most simple advice to any artist is like, just be yourself. But yeah. then when you start to make art, it's like, who the hell am I? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't even know who I am. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So you have to be able to risk, but then also be stubborn. It seems like you're doing a good, it seems like it worked. Same with you. Good job. Same, and also yeah. it's not about to get any easier. Yeah, it gets it gets harder. It gets <laughs> it harder. It will just continue to be difficult. Yeah, I know. This, this dance of like, who the hell am I? Yeah, yeah. What feels right? Yeah. Do you meditate? No, but everyone's been telling me to. Because I like, do think there's something about getting quiet with yourself to hear at least what you want. So how, how do you do you meditate often? I've had seasons where I've been really good. Right. I'm not in one right now. I got to get it back. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what is a good season for you? Like, what a good is that? season is where you like uh, sit for 15 minutes and either with, a, with like an app or even just be quiet with yourself so you can yep. even hear your own inner self. And, and, and how often do you it's like- It's very hard to do. Super hard. 
Because you, you like it, you know if you're like you right now, you have a tour, a lot of things going on. Yeah. And if, if say you start like when you leave this podcast before everything goes crazy, you find a, a spot in your dressing room and you just sit down, put the timer on your phone for fifteen minutes, and just, just be quiet. I should do it. Try it. I it, it do it's it. like a workout for your brain. Yeah. And the same, I feel like when I am done with an actual like physical workout, you have this like high that feels good. Yeah. It's yeah. similar in the different way. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, my manager's like, you got to start doing this. You got to do it's it. like too, too much anxiety. I did a similar thing this morning for the first time when I got up. I I just said, I'm not going to touch my phone for, for 30 minutes. And that might sound small. No, no, no. That sounds enormous. Dude, because I've been getting up and looking at emails and I'm like, oh God, I got this to do. I got this to do messages. And I'm like, like, oh God, like I'm already stressed. You yeah. I mean, I'm like, and I'm one of those people like, I'm a warrior. I don't know about you, like, Self doubt, anxiety. Like I'm also like. Oh no, I have none of that. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you're like you're like ultra confident all the time. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, yeah, you, yeah, you know what it's like. And I'm like, okay, if I just like so maybe the first step can be starting the day not on my phone. And uh, it sounds like such a simple thing and cliche, but it, I feel better. I feel a little bit better this morning. So, so you you actually do wait thirty full minutes. Just this morning, my first day, I was like, I, put, I set a timer, and I'm yeah. like, I'm not touching this. I mean, I had to touch the phone to set the timer, the timer. but I didn't look at anything while yeah, I was on there. Good. And uh, yeah, because I'm just like, I just, I just, from the get go, you can't be looking at things. Like as soon as you wake up, you have to like enter the day. Yeah. Like is like I and I'm I, I haven't been doing it, and I and I feel better when I do it. Uh, sure. and when you walked in here, you were saying that it that this city feels different. Oh, this city, like LA, yeah. In general, this place is uh, well, especially where we are. Like, um, I mean, I don't know what suburb anything is, but yeah, yeah. it's so tranquil and so, uh, especially where we are a little bit out. It's like really yeah. nice. But I, I, I love Los Angeles, man. Really, I, I love LA. It's really nice. Like the people, a little bit. Like you can get some. It's definitely a unique sort of people in general. Like. Because a lot of people come here. It's fun to hear it from another perspective. Yeah, yeah. So explain what 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 a Los Angeles person is to, well, to from an Aussie. Yeah, well, it's like I mean, a lot of people, I guess, coming to, I guess, go to achieve something great. They're all here to. A lot of people are here to achieve something. Yes. Or um, sometimes that can be fame, which can be a little bit weird. Yes. Um, you know what I mean? Like if the target is that, um, <laughs> totally. which is interesting. But I also love, and this is an American thing, but I guess for me, it's like it's the biggest in Los Angeles. Is like what I love is you guys really encourage success. And if you're going for it, you sort of support each other. Totally. Whereas in England and Australia, like if you can't really talk about- The tall poppy thing? The tall poppy thing, yeah. yeah. It's like, you don't talk about if, the good Yeah, things. we don't even know what that is here. No. I remember I learned about it in Australia. So tell everybody what tall poppy syndrome is. Yeah, tall, tall poppy syndrome is like, if you start thinking you're a bit good, like if you start thinking you're a bit too good, like Australians would be like, nah, I'm off you. Like they'll, they'll start to like, you know, like the, they'll just start to kind of tear you down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think, so, so the tall poppy thing is that like if one- a poppy is a flower. If one flower gets too high, you cut it back down so that everybody down. just is in the same zone. Yeah, don't think too highly now, of yourself. Now, the problem, the other way is that you know there's lots of egos that run rampant here, so that's a that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I guess I like it because if you are if you are good, you will get brought up. But also, I feel like if like people will sort of tell you you're good. So like I think delusion <laughs> delusion is also quite high in certain people. It's like you get lucky if you're really good at something you can go up, but yeah. if you're not. But in Australia you kind of got to you just kind of you got to do your own thing but not talk about it too much. It's like a really weird balance. Which I, I think is probably okay. It's healthy. You need a blend of both. I, exactly, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I, I do love it here. Man. So you've been is this like a, one of those things where it's a really long time and then an overnight success? Yeah. How long have you been working at this? Yeah, um well god, like I mean I started pretty late but I mean, I was writing songs for like probably like probably like eight years to see my room, not thinking it was that good. Like, do you know what I mean? We I don't know if you were the same, but like I was never like the guy showing everyone on my demos being like, hey man. Really? Like, yeah, I had this one day where I sent 30 managers uh, a, a demo just like and I was like, this is the day I'm gonna do it. What and, you sent 30 managers or Yeah, demo? I like I looked on online in Australia and was like, here's 30 managers. And and this is the only thing I ever did, because like my girlfriend at the time was like, you gotta do it. Yeah. And I sent every this massive email and no one got back to me and i was like no actually i sort of say that there's one manager that got back you know uh his name was jad and comerford he's like does looks after like uh vance joy and like cool and, Michelle, and and he actually got back to me and said do you have any other songs and i didn't so i just didn't write back to him yeah but it's been easier just to say no one wrote back um <laughs> so sort of no one wrote back to me and um and then i was like okay well that's it i guess that's my that's your that's yeah. my thing and then um this sounds like a lie this story because it's so ridiculous but my best mate, his name's Matt DeGroote, and he was on a boat with this girl called Leonie who used to manage Savage Garden. Yeah. And uh, this is four years ago, and he passed on a demo. I like, like gave her a link to a demo of mine on this boat. 
and she actually listened what? to it. Yeah, yeah. And she went, she went back in the taxi and was listening to the the vo- like on her on her phone. And then she called me the next day and was like, "I want to sign you. Pu- you're publishing to write songs for other people. Wow. I, I have no money for you. Like it's." And my lawyer was like, "Man, like you can't sign this deal. Like it's zero dollars, and you're going to give away you know twenty percent of your songs or whatever." And sure. But I knew that was my. That was my way in. I trusted them and they've been the best people ever. Wow. But weird story. I they know that's interesting. Yeah. It's kind of I weird. feel like you are right now. Um, there's there, like in the, in this time period, you're, uh, you, there's room for, at least on the, on the world stage, there's only room for a couple of people like you at a time. Yeah. Do you abso- know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, there's absolutely. no, there's no hard and fast rule. I'm just no. like in my mind, that's what it seems like. Yeah. You have I'm, like passenger comes through yep. and then like Ed Sheeran in the beginning and now yep. Ed Sheeran is doing his thing. But yeah. right now you're, you're, you're in this spot, which uh, is people really love is this yeah. guy with the guitar that, that makes you feel something. Yeah. I remember Damien Rice had it a little yes. while ago. Yep. And it's just like so special that you're here. Well, I, I that's a really interesting point. Yeah. And, um, I think a lot of the success of Be Alright was down to like timing. Yeah. Like I was like, if I released that six months earlier when um, like Ed Sheeran was out, Shawn Mendes was out, um, they all, they kind of finished their album cycles. Like I sound so business saying this. No, no, but there but was no one there. to it. Yeah, yeah. There was no one there. So I'm like, I'm like, thank God we waited and we released it. At, we didn't, we didn't. <laughs> but how the hell do you know that? Yeah, you, it's so lucky. It's like, yeah. I mean, imagine if it came out six months before and like there was, you know, the, the big singer songwriters were there, like great songs and like, um, and you know you you take it to these people like radio and maybe yeah. radio maybe radio would have gone well that spot because there is only a few spots is taken up by you know these songs we've already added so maybe it doesn't do and as did well. it just take off like once you put it out it yeah. just it just took yeah like I might, yeah it, it went crazy like um I knew it was I knew be alright was a special song because I'd play it and people would kind of come up to me afterwards like just live when I play it live yeah but I mean I had a song called Waves that did really well in Australia but sort of nothing outside of America Got and it. I, but I was like this is what a big song feels like like I didn't sure but then when be alright came out and uh, like it's actually I think it's been like seven months and it's just starting to peak in America like it's still growing like America's weird Very how strange. slow it is like yeah it's slow um, but. I've never experienced anything like it. It kind of went bang in all these different territories. And all of a sudden, like I was sitting there, no one wanted to talk. You know what I mean? I'm like, kind of like, what promo are we doing today? And they'd sort of take you into like, um, no disrespect, like, but like you'd go into like, you know, these like, like Shazam or like, but, sure. and, and they'd sort of run you through the app. Yeah. And it was really nice of them to take me in, but there was not really anything that you're sort of doing. It's kind of, of like they sort of feeling the schedule. And now it's nice to like be able to have people that, you know, if, if you're going into a place, it's like, you're talking, you're interviewing people who want to talk to you, and you know it's tough. It's hard to get to this place. Oh, you know it's what I mean? really it's, it's cool. hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny. I remember go, having gone through it to some degree, and you're and and everybody's interviewing, going like, "How does it feel? Is it amazing?" And you're like, "It does." Um, it's also just like a lot and crazy. And a lot like and crazy. All, there's all this stuff going on. You know? How how did you deal with it? Like, was I mean, I remember. I think in Australia was when I obviously heard Fresh Eyes because that was. Oh yeah gigantic in australia which is so awesome it's really yeah to have that's like i've had a couple now that have done better outside of the u.s than they did in the u.s right did that did well in the u.s so it did pretty good but it it wasn't like a radio smash like it was you know we kept getting these emails that are like oh my god this song is like huge in australia blowing up it was huge so fun huge and And then we actually had to go tour there which was great yeah how did you how did how did you like australia i love australia yeah do you and you when was the last time you were there um was it for the logies two years ago when was our a year and a half, year and a half, year and a half ago? Okay, yeah, right. And I think we did back. the Logies before that, and uh, I just man, the vibe of Australia is the best. It's sort of like LA, like a little bit, like the weather. Sure, the people are maybe a little bit nicer. It's like a little better. A little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit better. It's like LA, like a little better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a little bit better. Everybody's yeah. a little bit better. Honestly, yeah. better looking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the vibe is great. The food is fantastic. The beaches are good. We had a really, really good time there. I think I've been there, you know, three or four times now. Yeah. And again, I got to do the Logies, which was amazing. That's cool. Which yeah. people don't even know. If you're not from Australia, you don't know what the Logies are. It's That's, like their Oscars. It's like our Oscars. But it's yeah. really, it was, it was like some sort of strange Twilight Zone thing. It's because all these people are like, they look like stars, but I don't know who they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. They look great hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so like, we're on the red carpet and it's like, that kind of looks like Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah, 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 but yeah, it's yeah. not. Yeah, we have a lot of like, yeah, a lot of, I guess that's the thing is like in Australia, when you're coming out here, it's like you can be 
big in Australia, but no one knows you when you come outside of Australia. Like yeah. as, a, and as an Australian, like totally. no one, no one knows who you are. And it's like, it was really it? fun. And, and the, and the culture over there is just, it's awesome. So I, I mean, I, I have a lot of love for us. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, yeah, you're probably due to come back here. Yeah. I gotta but get I'm, back. I'm glad you like it. Cause there's definitely similarities between. Now, are you on purpose only releasing a couple songs at a time? Do you think, do you guys think that's the way it should go now? Yeah. Well, we've got an album that's kind of coming out really soon. And I guess the thing was every time, like we put out Be Right and we were like, okay, we'll put this out and then the album will come out like three months later or something. Yeah. And then like the song just kept growing. So, and one thing I've noticed, and I don't know if we're right about this thing, but sure. we haven't wanted to cut songs off. Like totally. I, I've, I've noticed a lot of people sort of like, um, a lot of artists, they sort of put so many singles out. Like, and it's doing well and they'll just put another one out. And so we've made a conscious effort of like, let's let the song live and have its thing. And I know we're in like a streaming world now, but we were very conscious of like, no, we'll wait. And then once the song is really doing its thing then uh, and, and passed, then we'll put the next one out. Yeah. And the idea was always like two singles into an album, I think. So, oh, cool. And that's going to come out soon. And uh, But uh, the songs just have been lucky to keep keep going. And where what's your take on how it works? Do you have like, what's your writing vibe? Do you write a ton? Do you write yes, a couple? Yes, I write a lot. I write okay. a lot. I, I write a lot of songs. Um, co-write alone? Yeah, well, half the album's alone and half's co-write. Yeah. So um, you like co-writing? I do. I, I do like it. Um, sometimes it can be really weird. Oh yeah. Like, cause I came from the other side. Like, I was a, I was a, to, I was the top line guy. Like, oh, I was that was my okay. thing. And I was like, this is great, man. You know, I can write with other artists. <laughs> and then someone's mum wouldn't like the song, and then the song would never get released. I, I just know. hated that. That's hated really it. hard. It's the worst thing. And so I was like, no, nah, this is not going to work. Yeah. But I yeah. So my writing vibe is like, um, like if it's just a song that I write, it's usually like alone at night. You know, I'll usually actually hear a song, like just say there'll be a new song that comes out or I'll hear something that like, like a really good song and I'll get inspired and I'll go, I want to write it. Like it's something that's great will inspire me to pick up the guitar. And do you think this, let's get weird for a second. Yeah. Where does that come from? Do you mean the obsession or like- No, the, like the actual idea. Do you think that that is something that's just like in your brain that, that like you think of? Is it coming from yeah. somewhere else? Yeah. Is there, are, is there like- a force that's helping you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, like, let's get it's weird. So scary. Let's get weird. Okay, you want to hear my? I got a weird theory on this. Take right? me. Yeah, I, I reckon. Um, I think that I haven't said this in a while because it's. But I, I used to think this, and this is. I still think it. It was that you know, like some people are just really good at like maths. Like some people, like in high, in like primary school, or like high school, like they're just like really zoned in on maths. Sure. Like are I you, feel are like you putting an S at the end of that. Uh, ma math. Maths. Oh, you guys say math. You guys say math. Cool. No, it's awesome. It's Australian. Maths. Yeah, yeah. That's okay, Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'm just really dumb. Like I'm obviously not good no, at no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's no. so many things like that. Yeah, Matt. But go Matt. on. I, you said it four times. I had yeah, to get yeah, the no, second. No, no, okay, no, no. I okay. didn't realize. That's right. So um, some people are very good at maths. Yeah, and like you're, and and like I feel like this might be wrong, but maybe if you view the the brain as like a pie chart, like as a hundred percent, like maybe you're you just have like a certain predisposition. Like those ki kids have like a certain thing with maths, and like some people are great at like you know, uh, writing essays or they're like really good with people. Yeah. Like, and it's like, but they're, it's like, if you get 70% really good at maths, this is really dumb what I'm saying. I'm then, into it. Then you have like 30% left for everything else. And my theory, which might be crazy is like, you know, um, maybe some people have just better, like if uh, ways of like sort of retaining melodies, like when you're growing up listening to music, yeah. your brain, um, not saying you're um, oh, special, but maybe like you have a little bit more of a percentage in your yeah. brain that like, uh, is, you know, will retain melodies and those melodies will kind of come out and just mesh up and come out in different ways. Totally. That's my theory on it, but I don't know. I, there's, what this, do you think? there's this incredible talk by Elizabeth Gilbert that everyone should go see. Elizabeth it's her, Gilbert. It, it's her TED talk. She wrote the book Eat, Pray, Love. Okay. Yeah, and she yeah. talks about like where inspiration or songs come from. Yeah. And she's talking that she doesn't know where it comes from. And she tells a story, I think it was like Cat Stevens, somebody who was driving and a melody started coming in his head. Yeah. And he like looked up to the sky and was like, can't you see I'm driving? <laughs> like come back when I'm not driving. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't yeah. have a, I don't have any recorder. I don't have anything I can do right now to take this down. So whoever you are, whatever's going on, could you please wait? Just yeah. like come back later. And, and she happens? tells other stories about, and, and so her thing is your whole job is to just show up. Right. And, and then hopefully wh where it comes from will come at that point. It'll come at that point. She, yeah. I mean, she's alluding to the idea that it's even, it's even like more mystic. Yeah. Than just like some sort of, tr like, I think you have to be trained, but I'm not above the idea that it comes from somewhere else because I don't know yeah. how this works. No, are you, so that's your, you're just like, I don't know where it comes I, from. Well, I'm open to all things. Like, I don't know, 
where inspiration comes from. And if it does, like I'll say, you know, my mom is passed away 10 years ago and she yep. was a songwriter. So I'm like, yo, if there is some sort of like hookup that we can do together, <laughs> like I'll Help shout her out before I go into it. You know, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. anything's on the table for me. I'm <laughs> yeah, not yeah. like, I'm pretty weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's the thing is like the eternal, like ha- I mean, I was watching that Tom Petty documentary the other day. I don't know if you've seen it. I haven't seen it, no. It's what does he say? Happy. He was saying that like, he, he yeah, he, I think he was saying that it comes, he doesn't know where it comes from, but when it comes, it comes. In this thing, he was kind of mm. he just picks up his guitar and he just sits there until it comes down. Oh, yeah, it is it is a tough thing. I'm a big Noel Gallagher guy, yeah. And he talks about like how, um, that you know, he sees it as fishing and he picks up the guitar, shows up, and eventually these ideas will come down, yeah. Um, but yeah, but to me, what's awesome about that is like I totally believe that's how it is, it's like fishing, yeah. yeah. But then, what is the pond? Is the pond only our, our, our heads or things that we've seen or understood, mm. or is it literally? Again, let's get weird. Yeah. Somewhere else, something. Yeah. Are you fishing when you say like I want to? I want to create art. Yeah. Are you then saying like I'm going to go fishing in this? Uh, well, it's the pond. What is what the, is the pond? Because well, yeah. we've I don't know. I've had experiences where I will go fishing, which is just showing up, and then some shit will come through mm. that's like not from my brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know exactly how to explain that. Yeah. And anyone who's ever had that experience where yeah. it just flops out in like thirty minutes. Yeah. You're like whoa okay maybe i just like my brain is doing some extra stuff or there's something else weird going on here that i got i was used to something just came through me Uh, and i don't want to like self-aggrandize myself i'm not like saying that i'm special or amazing but this this feeling that there is something else from somewhere else yeah that then comes out through you yeah i can't fully disagree with no, but I, that's yeah. weird. Yeah, that's it is. Really weird. Really that's weird. what we're saying. Yeah. yeah. Look, I mean, I've had those situations where, like, um, a, a few times where I've been walking and, and a line to a chorus that's made it onto my album has just come into my head. And and I've had, you know, like when I first started writing songs, like, um, you know how like the, the the first time you write, like whatever comes down is like the song. Like yeah. you kind of, and I feel like eventually, like for me, the second part of like songwriting, like I had these two stages. Like after a few years, I was like, oh, you don't actually have to like whatever comes down. Sometimes it's kind of crappy it can be like, shit yeah. it's gonna be shit but i was like that's the song man and then i was like oh no you can actually just kind of craft it after that that's like the second phase so you have the melody and the the rough ideas this is a big difference between like pro songwriters and yeah and like the, when you start knowing out. when to mess with it because yes. there are times that it comes through and it's like do not mess with that, that yes perfect. yes and yes. knowing when it's like it's not it could be better exactly and that's yeah. a really tough that's a tough thing but like you know you know it's like when you have the first two lines of a verse that just come out and it isn't like you. It's like not from your life. That's yeah. a cool moment. But then the third verse is like just complete gibberish, or it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't hit. Like it doesn't carry a story. And that's yeah. that is the second level of songwriting. And I'm as, as you said, like that's when you get to that. Like I guess pro, trying to get to pro. Um, when you start to start going, oh, I can actually craft this is in whatever way I want. And that's the discipline. Yeah, that's the totally dis- the discipline. The discipline of it. But um, that's You're a making big me moment. think of this talk again. This Elizabeth, Elizabeth Gilbert talk. She says that uh, in Greek times that everybody had a genius. They like, they weren't a genius. There was like this other place that was your muse that would send you ideas. And that was what what they were all aware of. They 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 kind of like all agreed. And then at some point it switched to where you didn't have a genius, you were a genius. Right. And that's just like way too much pressure. That's very, that's very now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's cool about that is that that having this break in between, it allows you to not feel so terrible when things are bad. And then oh, not feel yeah. so great when it's things like a are safety, amazing. Safety yeah, it's thing. a little bit of a safety that there's yeah, something else at play here yeah. that we're dealing with when yeah. we're trying to catch these weird ideas. I love that. I, well, actually, I, I like that. This podcast. I really, I, mean, I really like TED Talk. It's TED a TED, yeah, talk. TED Talk. I really love this idea that there, yeah. that it's not just you. Yeah, yeah. That no. There's more going on here that you are pulling. Well, like, yeah, this idea of where are you fishing. Well, I guess it's also it's it's like a really humble thing to say because it's like you're saying anything that I do that's great. Is not really me. Like, you know what I mean? I think that's yeah, a cool I'm, thing to well, say. Well, I'm healthy. here. I'm like yeah. getting it down. I'm, yeah. I'm catching it. Yeah. But I have had experiences. I have had experiences where like I've crafted something, you know, uh, there's this song that's going to probably be on my next album that I had to write. I don't know whether you do this, but I'll, yeah. I'll have an idea. It, it's this song called Naive. And I have an idea of how I want that to come across. There's a grander idea of what it should be. And then I'll go write it and be like, nah, it didn't work. Right. So then I'll write it again. So, like, oh, so you'll have like the, the the idea of like I know I know how I want it to feel uh, when it lands right and right. and I know how it feels inside me a concept and then it's like trying to get it all the way out and by the time it comes out of me it's too far off to what it felt like 
So then you like throw it away and you try again and then you get it. The process of it coming out again yeah, yeah, is yeah. like, shit, wow. it still doesn't feel the way I want it to. Let me take another angle. And so I wrote it five times and I finally got it the way I wanted it So you, it you wrote the, like this, this concept five this concept, times yeah. and then the fifth time you're like, that's, that's. I got like, it. I finally caught it. That's so interesting. Yeah. So. So that was not a situation where it's like, oh, that just fell out and was perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's That's like many different ways this works. To totally. You know what I mean? To how did how did like? Okay. I wonder if my genius was like, I don't really know. I just know this is cool. So like, yeah. here's this beginning. You want to finish it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, I'm yeah. like, totally. Yeah. <laughs> then I messed it up as it came out, yeah. and I had to just keep trying. But see, it's interesting what you say. Like, where does that um, like uh, that is I is obsession the wrong word? Like, because obsession has been a big thing for me. Like obsessed mm. with writing songs and just doing it because you like it but just say that idea there where you're like you had the concept where does the um the follow-through come from and your ability to keep persevering when it's not working um, and have you always had that you know I'm, I'm a pretty obsessive dude i would say and especially the first i think the first being obsessive before anybody believes that what you have is valuable is yeah, the yeah. hardest yeah yeah now yeah. i know i get all these you know, I go do shows, go do tours, things, people rate to me online and stuff about how valuable it is. Yeah. So I have this cheering squad to go find what they like. Yes. You know, so I'm like an archaeologist who now has, I know I have people who really want what it is that I love to find. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now I'm obsessed for not just myself, but for, you know, my friends and fans and team. And you have this positive reinforcement. Positive right? reinforcement, like, oh man, we really love the type of stuff you find. So yeah. please go keep finding it. <laughs> I love so, that. So, so then now I, I have a, an obligation to yeah. show up and, and try to get that through. But the first one is the hardest because no one's no one's there cheering you on. Is that's very good. That's so interesting. Cause like So the, so one yeah. of the reasons that I do this podcast is I love to share that with everybody. And I know that a lot of people that will hear this are in that stage. Where yeah. they don't have someone cheering them on or saying that you should do this or Absolutely. And it's just themselves. Yeah. So when when you for me podcasts are so important because when I hear other people talk about that first thing i'm like oh yes totally you're someone i respect and you're telling me how hard it was yes so maybe i should keep going today exactly and yeah. it's it makes it all feel possible and where did you have this always absolutely man like you know this that drive this drive and obsession with like and it wasn't out of um exactly what you're saying it was it wasn't out of like i want to be famous man it was out of like i watched noel gallagher and Noel oasis dvd and i was like that's really cool and then I just watch. I just watch his acoustic performances. Picked up a guitar, and I just really liked doing it. Yeah. And it was like, and then you know, did the first open mic night. No one's listening. Hands are literally shaking. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and and you know, and everyone's talking. And you, you you have to be your own, your own like not in a delusional way. Like do you know what I mean? Not a in like bit. a way. That's yeah, the maybe, problem. Maybe, maybe it is. Have you seen the fire documentary? Yeah, I did. I just watched that. That's crazy. That was like a hard one for me to watch it's, it's the first like 30 minutes because I knew that this guy was going to get taken down and that yeah. was the point of this movie. But also to do anything great, you yeah. kind of have to be insane like him. He lost yeah. it. He left He left in uh, like positive and like you can and you can do it. And like then there was like the serious lies and shit. But really like, weird. In the really beginning, weird. it was like, yeah, to do anything great, you got to be a little bit delusional. Exactly. And he actually had great ideas. Totally. He just was really weird. And uh, <laughs> God, yeah, anyway. Anyway. <laughs> but, anyway <whatever. laughs> um, but yeah, it was super psycho, that documentary. But I totally agree with you saying. And I guess maybe it is a little bit of delusion. Maybe just a bit of like, I'm never, I'm, I'm super like, I doubt, you know, songs. I doubt, you know, performances, you know, that anxiety. Another thing never goes away, which is really interesting for me. Like it's, you know, you do become a bit more confident in yourself and trust your gut, but I'm still super like anxious about stuff and, you know, doubting things that never goes away. But on the flip side, at the start, very like focused on heading towards something. Yeah. And that obsession is definitely, it was definitely there for me. Yeah. And, and do you have like your parent is your parents helping? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting to try and figure like, okay, so why do some people have this thing where they will never give up? Well, you know what it was? Well, it, I think it was like I'd, I'd wasted a lot of opportunities like just, you know, I, and I'd also it was, it just made me, it made me feel good. Like generally when I was in my room writing a song, I just felt good. Like, mm. and I finished the song and I'd show, I did show my mom and dad and they were super supportive, but they were also like, yeah, that's that's good, but you know, keep 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 a job. Were they down for you to try music or no? Yeah, they were they were super down for it, but they're always just like, you know, have the backup plan. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm sort of living my dad's dream. Like he he still will message me like Spotify numbers and uh, Apple oh, he Music. Will. We get added to Apple Music. Like he'll he'll you know, he'll be across everything. This radio station's added you and like uh, um, that's good. so he's he's super across it. And that's he's really like cool. I mean he had guitars growing up and like he got me into it properly. But yeah. um 
But yeah, they've been super supportive. That's what really about you? Lucky. Your parents? Very lucky. My yeah, my dad is a children's singer. He's amazing. He's a Grammy nominated children's singer. And my mom was a songwriter with him. To oh write, wow! To write the stuff. So you like inherited? I just kind of grew up in the middle of it and right. slowly understood that that it can be done. Did your did your old man like show you how to like write songs and stuff? He like did. That? He was pretty chill about it. He never like pushed it, but he was that's good. Just again, like just knowing that that is a possibility that you could grow up and be a children's singer. Yeah. Like I didn't add a lot of barriers. I didn't have to break through. Yeah, because yeah. Because of that, which was dope. No, yeah. no, no, but to, but to to get to that to get to the point you've got to like it does require a lot of uh, like you, a lot of people like have parents that are you know sort of done similar things like or well, different things but yeah. in, in in the industry and that can actually a lot of time be like a like a negative it could be a negative yeah totally. like being and the son of like a you know the it Beatles wasn't and, all what I got from him was this idea that uh, it's just it's you can demystify it it doesn't have to be some super mystical. Uh, like how do you how do you get to be an artist? Right. You just watch them like oh you just work every day. So you watch the process. You watch you, you yeah. like it's like you show up every day like a normal job right. and you put a ton of work into it and so you create something that is of value to others and then it works. So what is your schedule like? Like what's your writing like? What are you doing right now? Are you like working on the next album? Yeah, we're on the next album. So I usually if I'm home, uh, Monday through Friday is writing. You know, right. every then, oh, Monday. Th okay. Well, yeah. 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 I actually. Luckily, just started to have a couple songs come out with other people too. Yep. So oh, just like tons of writing. And then, you know, we do a lot of like fly dates. And then when there's tour stuff, I, I've done the thing where I fly people out to write with me while I'm on tour. I like think it's like a muscle that you like have to keep up. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. So you're like yeah. doing it like showing up for work. Yeah, like my Monday. goal is to tire out my genius so I get a lot of different geniuses <laughs> showing up. <laughs> right, right. I'll call great. on different ones yeah, whenever yeah, I need. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, please hook it yeah. up. Like, um, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 like going back to that, I'm so weird that depending on the type of song that I write, yeah. I will like literally say the person's name out loud of someone that I think would be cool to work on it with who's passed away. I'm crazy. Wow. I'm insane. So what do you mean? Like you'll say like like Elvis I, or like something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Be like Elvis, what's up, dude? Let's do this. Hook it up. That's if you're great. around, I don't know if you're working with somebody else today, but like that'd be That's awesome really if you want to hop in with me. But then do you sort of sing in like when you're writing it? Because I've done a similar thing where like, you know, when I was writing songs for other people, like it was only three months. And, but I, I would sort of, and sometimes I guess I do this, I will sort of go, okay, how would... Noel Gallagher sings. Same thing. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, uh, yeah, we're, we're talking about the same same, same idea. Same thing, but yeah. different way of looking at looking it. At like, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then, and then all like Rihanna, or like um, Howard Sia write a song. And then all of a sudden totally. you can start freestyling out like Sia. Like it's really and weird. And so did you, when you were, did you find in the beginning that your song sounded too much like Bruce? Or no? It was just like a cool, it, you were just using, he just unlocked for you that you could, a, a style of. A style of, like a style of writing. lyric writing. Totally. Um, yeah, I, I, I initially that was sort of like Noel Gallagher, really melodic, you know, those kind of like sus chords. Like yeah. I did a lot of that and the lyrics were just sort of gibberish. Like I had one song that was like like 40 mountains high to love you. It was all this kind of stuff. I would yeah, climb 40 yeah, mountains. Yeah. I was like, what? Um, and then eventually, um, that, that's the hardest part was finding, yeah, Bruce unlocked the lyric thing, but un unlocking my style and, and figuring out exactly what a Dean Did you have some wonderfully was. off? Terrible. Like what? Yeah. Give me some styles um, that didn't work. Oh, I mean, like just, you know, I tried things with like electric guitar. I tried things like super really raw. Um, and I tried like, we had some super poppy things. Actually, there was there was one song uh, that's going to come out of my album called Stay Awake that I'm really excited about that blew my mind because we did this writing demo of it. Um, and it was really kind of like, like the recording was just, it just felt like another artist. Yeah. And, and didn't feel right. Didn't feel right at all. Like so wrong that actually, uh, you know, I actually wasn't sure I could use the song, but I knew it was a, a, a great song. Sure. And eventually I, I took this one back to the guys that did Waves and Be All Right. And I was like, hey, listen to this song. Let's re record it, like how we do it. And it actually blew my mind um, how much you can, like, like the production is like clothes. And you can change, yeah. like, and you can make it sound like you. You can almost make anything, anything sound like you. And it just requires, like, knowing who you are and, uh, I guess, money from a from you or a label. Do you know what I mean? Because you need to have money to redo things and stuff totally, like that. Totally. But the knowing who you are and what your sound is has been a big thing for me. And I think I've figured, like, that out. Like, what's yeah. a Dean Lewis song kind of thing? So yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you? Like, have you, like, are you, with your production, do you... To me, the production is always up for debate as long as the song... As long as the the emotion and the feel is there, I've been right. pretty lucky to have some like wide ranging production things right. that still work. So you mean on the album? Sometimes you'll have, or you mean like album to album, they'll change completely. Or yeah, even on the album. On the album, right. like I'm pretty loose when it comes to like what we're gonna do to this. Are we gonna put like a 
is it should this one just be acoustic or yeah. should it be like heavy synth or should it be to me right. it's the the lyric is the is the through line which has been really fun do you um and do you usually use the same producer or do you just use different guys tons like, of different producers yeah yeah, yeah tons yeah. of different things to me the through line is again is like lyrics man is the lyric you yeah are you saying what you want to say yeah as soon as i know that's there then it's like let's play that's really Let's go wherever the hell we want to go. That sounds that sort of sounds fun. It's really fun. I'm not like that. No, I'm so, I'm so different. <laughs> I'm not like that, man. I'm like I am not like. No, that. I'm just like oh, like I stress, man. I stress like, like um. I mean, this is the thing. Like, I grew up with the the idea of an album being just a collection of good songs. Yeah. Like, and that's what it still is. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I really stress about the the like the the sonics being sort of sort of similar like not exactly totally i think there's pluses and negatives to yeah. all of it yeah but I, really i'm really cool. envious of like sometimes i wish i could just be like i'm going to do this i'm going to do thing. this synthy thing you yeah. know what i mean like just what you know and then but may, maybe i'll get to that point in the next album or whatever yeah, like yeah, yeah. how many albums do you have out uh, i have three albums three, out yeah. almost your fourth, but i put out the fourth one yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and so this is cool. your first time have you been to all the cities so I did the the Brett Denon thing. I I did uh, I did a, a lot of cities, man. Like so, I'm going back to a lot of. Them. I've done the the, the American uh, tour before, but not really, not really like you know when things are happening for you. Yeah, and it's like um, it's different. It's different. Like it's. But although I, in saying that, I did the um I did the whole U.S. promo run. You okay. Know, three radio stations a day. I sported Noah Oof. Khan actually. Uh, he's a great songwriter. Yeah. You should, um, and yeah. So I did the yeah. That's a that's a whole different How'd you beast. Like it? it was great. I just um, at the end of the last year, I basically got really sick because like I had a I got this really bad conjunctivitis and I had to cancel half my tour. And it was just because and it lasted a month. It usually lasts three days. Than that. Dude, it was it was just from I didn't take a day off. And I'm not being like I'm I'm working no, so no, hard. No, no, like no. this is what it is. This is what it is. And it's also like. I know how lucky we both are to be doing this. Like, um, I know there's a lot of harder jobs to have. Yeah. But like, um, I just think it was like, you know, I was doing three radio stations and doing promo, then doing a show. And then we didn't have a bus because uh, so we were flying the next day uh, for like brutal. three. Dude, it was, uh, it was too much. So I'm trying to now, <laughs> how do you deal with it? How, how do you deal with it? And what do you do? Like, I have it really down to a science. Um, I just have a seizure at the end of it. <laughs> At the end of every day, <laughs> my one of my songs, the song called "Smoke Clears," is all about like it wasn't a seizure, but it looked very much like one. Right, we like finally took a break and we went on vacation to Ireland, and I like freaked out and like because you because you were so too used much, to too much. Yeah, you mean you freaked There's out? There's too many things to have. Yeah, I did the thing where like you know, honey, I'm good hit, and I did every I said yep. yes to every single possible thing. Yes, opened a lot of doors though. Like, oh my god, how do you not? Yeah, if yeah. I could do it again, I honestly don't know what the answer would be. No, yes, I'm still here. As long as I know the seizure doesn't kill me, this yeah. is terrible. No, but like you, you, you eventually have to understand. This but you, is the actually, problem. you actually have. This is what I'll say. To, yeah, I'll say this: to start any business, to get anything off the ground, takes a level of insanity that is like not healthy. Yes, yes. The problem is that that you then think that that is how you do business. Yeah, and that's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. So you have to figure out this way to get yourself off the ground with this thing yeah. and then realize that that's not the only way to do it and, yeah. and fall into some sort of sustainable workflow or you'll die. Literally, literally die. Literally die. And I think that marathon, yeah. not sprint mentality is, but you know, this is, that's really interesting what you say. Like, cause I can tell with you, you have like quite a, you're quite up and you're like engaged, yeah. but you can't be like that. And I'm, the, I'm sort of the same. <laughs> you, we can't be like that. I mean, I can't talk for me. I can't be like that all day. Like I need, I need like, if you know, I need like at 5 p.m. to switch off. Totally. Do you know what I mean? Or like, I just I actually get a bit jittery. Yeah. Like if I'm on all day and I'm like doing things, I like, and I don't have any hour either side, like I actually get a bit, yeah. I never, never used to get like that. So we've been trying to like, just do like, you know, three shows in a day. And it's a, it's a really gnarly thing. Again, good problems. But really you, good problems. But, you, yep. but they're problems though. And you they have are. to figure out how to say no to things that are amazing. Yes, yes. That's brutal. I'm bad at that. Oh, because you want to say so yes. I have so much FOMO in every area of my life. Yeah, yeah. I like to say like, I don't know, you know that song, uh, that book, Fifty Shades of Grey? Yeah. I read that because everybody, <laughs> I read like the first th th uh, four pages, four uh, chapters yeah, of that. Yeah. And, I, and, and then midway through, I'm like, oh, I, this isn't for me. I don't need this. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I like, I need to know what is going on. Right. I like to be a part of everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't ever want to know there's a party that, I, that I'm not at. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so it, it's a serious skill to learn. Of like to say figuring no. out the me time thing. Yeah, it's super important. I went yeah. to my first. Uh, I went to my first like cool party in America. How was it? Well, it was like a Universal Music post Grammy party. Nice man, it was cool, but like, it's so weird. Those it's, things. They're very weird. It's so weird because everybody's looking to see who who's a little bit above them. Exactly, and everyone's so compared. Everyone knows 
everyone else and what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Like, they can also be really cool. You can meet a lot of awesome people. A lot of cool people there. Very lot cool. strange situation. Very strange. But it's just like- Did you meet somebody cool? Uh, yeah. Who did I meet that was cool? Yeah, I met James T.W. Have you oh, met him? I, he came out with us. He's amazing. Dude, he's a good dude. So I met him Great first time. Dude. Yeah, Great dude. He toured guy. with us, uh, I think it was last two years, something like that. Last so he, oh, he like opened he for He opened for us and he, that guy knows how to work a crowd and- He's awesome. He's a good dude. I great was voice, awesome song. Great voice, awesome song. And I was so surprised. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to be like, like super humble. It's like I honestly, I was like, he knew, he knew who I was. Do you know what I mean? Like, he knew who I was, and I was like, of course, like, I love your music, and I'm like, that's really cool. Like, that's I was, like, I love your music. Yeah, you know? it's like, great. It's this cool, like little. That's exciting. Thing. But I'm just getting into like, you know, coming from Australia, this doesn't happen. Like, it doesn't. You don't. You don't. You grow up in Australia, hearing no one breaks in America. There's like three artists that that have like Tame Impala, Sia. Five seconds of summer. Yep. It's sort of it. Do you know what I mean? Like there's not, it doesn't happen. And um, it's, it's a very special moment that you're in. Yeah, it's fun yeah. to see you in this moment. It's cool. It's a special thing. Yeah. It's also insanity. It's completely As insane. someone that understands a little bit. Um, yeah. If I could do it again, if I was, if I, if I had any advice for you, yeah, I would say, you know, do what you're doing. Sprint like a psycho. Yeah. And, but then also be aware that you're human and it's okay sometimes to like, Chill out. I love that you have your brother here. That makes yeah. me really happy. Yeah, he's great. He's great. He That's of reminds, like really cool. It's cool. Yeah. It reminds you, it reminds me that uh like we'll be in Amsterdam, about to go on stage and we'll be tired. Like, you know, just say we've been traveling on flights and I'll be like, oh, here we go. Like, you know, and I love playing, but like sometimes, you know, that feeling where you're yeah. like tired. And then it'll be like, hey, you're like about to go on. And we'll do like the you know, like the hand like rock thing and it'll be like, yeah. you're going on stage in Amsterdam, like this is this is the ball game, he'll say. And this like, is the it's, ball game. This is the ball game. Like, this, this is it, you know? Mm. And it's kind of it, and also, this is funny, and you might understand this. Like, you know, you start to go on like shoots, and like they bring stylists for you, and they're like, and I've had a few stylists, and they will put you in this, they put me in like this weird, like you know, it could be like a banana jumpsuit, or you know, and and they'll be like, you look uh, great. Uh, break. I don't yeah. know what you're talking about because I think you're talking in Australian. Oh, shoots and stars. Oh, sorry. Okay, so you go, <laughs> so you go to like a like a, a, a music video shoot, or okay, you go to like okay. a. You go, I mean, I guess it's different over here. Right? No, no, that's right. Yeah. And, or you go to you like go, a, You go to a shoot. Yeah. But like then a photo what? shoot. And then like a stylist will kind of say, put you in like a- Oh, stylist. A stylist. Yeah, I yeah. you saying stars. Okay. Oh, a sti stylist right, will put right. you in something. Go on. That's my accent there yeah. for you. And they'll put you in like, you know, like a banana jumpsuit. I'm sure. exaggerating. And they'll yeah. be like, you look great. And then I'll be like- are you sure? And then, like, <laughs> and then I'll turn, and then Sean will turn up and go, what the hell are you wearing? Take that Take off. That off. That's not you. Very helpful. So, and I don't know who else, who else I'd say. We were say talking about this the other day that I was like being run ragged and I knew that I needed a friend. So I brought my, one of my friends from high school out to run merch for me. That's great. And he like, he ordered way too many shirts and it was like ridiculous. Like the, the yeah, business yeah. side of it, he was okay. I think he'd agree. He was like, not yeah, the best yeah. at yeah, yeah, yeah. But he made uh, the squad of basketball players in the camp the right number. Perfect. And perfect. it was like really important to me. Yeah, and, yeah. And that was like a really important decision that Sometimes it's hard to put up to the top of the list, but I, if I if I had any advice for you, those are important decisions. Still, bring bring your brother people that you love that you know yeah. that are close to you. Yeah, uh, and especially when you can, I don't know, people like you and me that are like almost workaholic issues. Yeah, yeah. You need to be aware that like, oh my, like my center is is not needs some love. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so radio promo needs love. Uh, we need to make sure the stylist is there yeah. and my center. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I need to feel good. My humanness yeah, 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 needs yeah. a little bit of love. I'm not a robot. Yeah, yeah like I, I'm not like, a robot. Yeah. And I remember being, you know, like saying like, I need this guy to come out and do merch. And everybody's like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and it was so good. Kieran yeah, is my yeah. jam. He's my favorite. Yeah, 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 yeah. So That's great. And, and with you and like with your band and stuff like that, they're obviously in the room, so you can't like, but if you, have they you really are struggled? the worst. The worst? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like, do, the worst. do you, do you like, has that been a, a big thing? Like, have you. Have you found, did you find the right band 10 years ago, five years ago, or did you craft it? And like, is it of people who's available? Like, how did you find the team? You uh, Well, first there's like a level of badass that has to be there. So they're all like badass. players. Players. Yeah. Yeah. yeah be really yeah, good yeah, players. Yeah, yeah. And then as important is like, just like the vibe or do they have the vibe? You know, these yeah. are like family, good, good people yeah. that I keep around me that, um, yeah. So like when we roll out, it's, it's like family. It's great. See, that's super important. And yeah. I've, and, I've and you can tell, and people come on, like people that ju come on to the team that don't fit, you can see right away. And right. They, it, they're out. And what do you do? Are you literally just that, just the, after the tour? You yeah, I'm, I'm like super loyal and I'll keep yep. you forever. Um, so I don't like to just give that out unless I know that you really fit with us. Yes. Yeah. It's so, I mean, I, this is, I brought my band from Australia. Yeah. So this is like their first bus tour as well. So we're like, uh, it's like, but they're like, you know, like my friends. You know so what I mean, well. exciting. So it's, it's cool. Dude, it's, have you watched the Coldplay documentary? No, I really, really, really want to watch oh that. Oh my though. God. It's is so it good. 
Oh. And they were talking about how like the drummer for Coldplay didn't even play drums when he got invited into the band. Really? Yeah. He's a he's a savage player. Oh, he's, he's awesome. a beast. Yeah, he's but they're really like good. he was like a guitar player that they knew, and they were just were going around with like who, who are we gonna do this with? And then they were like, well, you you seem cool. Then that's how that's <laughs> you're how like happened. our friend. Do they film you know? this all? Is it like is it like commentary or is it like actually behind oh, the scenes? There's scene so stuff? much. So the guy who's was, was filming it has been with them for twenty years. Dude, I gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. It got I, me the other day. I I really this watch idea it. that you know there's can some sometimes be a tendency to go after the brightest best brightest newest like bring new people in get yeah. the best thing yeah and that doesn't always that's not always the best that this that oh, this, the like best player yeah right. like this camaraderie of finding out who yeah just like building a family yeah is actually very very valuable yeah and really important well they seem like they're like a real a real family yeah. but i extend that to like you know producers as well like in no stuff totally like, that. like it's this idea that that loyalty and family and and there's something extra that's added when you stick with people for a really long time yeah yeah i guess this is like this is our first tour so at the end i might be like completely you know just completely yeah. go, i got a new band but i don't think so i don't th- I, don't, I, don't, I don't i don't think that's don't gonna hold me to this no 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 yeah, this yeah, is not yeah. exactly because yeah, it's like my first u.s tour but uh, these, these so guys we've been, we've been touring for like six months um so it's like yeah just great guys and it's like we're all really excited like we're trying to like figure out the rider situation and like they like they don't drink yeah so we i, I don't know what you do on your rider but we like I have like, I don't drink much. Like I have like half a shot of Jamison before I play. Got it. And we've been trying to like get like, um, cause we know we're going to be on a bus, like in, on the ride, like fresh fruit and stuff like that. And like veggies to oh, make we're like, the worst, we want to stay, what do you, what do you do? What do oh, you everybody's do? got allergies, gluten-free, oh, the whole serious? freaking thing. So we're a joke. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. That's good, but yeah. terrible. People yeah. come in and they're like, you know, like we'll meet somebody in a different city and they'll come backstage and they have expectations. Is this yucca flower? What's going yeah. on, dude? What are you guys? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but this is the thing is like the the expectation of like, I wonder if that whole old school rock star thing just getting wasted and like, I mean, I'm sure it exists. It but must like, exist. I don't I've, see it a lot. I've never seen it. I, I don't see it a lot. You, yeah, you've probably toured more than I me. I mean, so. some people drink, but like bombed is not something that seems to be happening right now. Yeah. At least in the in the shows that we're playing. You know what I mean? Well, I think there's like also too many, maybe it's because there's like, there's so many How do you sing now. like that? I don't know who, Dude, what are you talking about? How do you about? save your voice like on tour yeah. actually? That's interesting. How do you, uh, like, do, you, you know, always, do your voice go a lot? It does sometimes, you know, yeah. depending on how long the tour is. Right now, man, with this kid, I have this little like 18 month old kid. I've just been sick for like oh, a year and so you a half. you keep getting the, the, the sickness Yeah, the kid. so yeah. that's a little tough, but oh. you, you do your best. A lot of it yeah. is like obnoxious, not talking. Yeah. A lot of steam room stuff. I got to do that. I got to do the, um, the not talking thing, but I always feel like if someone's in the room. So like, unfair. It's Because what happens is, you give yourself, you give yourself, you give yourself, and then when it's your time to like be who you want to be, you can't talk. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Miserable. E- exactly. Yeah. And and, and, and you might want to like just say, I mean, I'm not a drinker guy, but like, yeah. just say you'll have, we'll just you know finish a tour in Australia, and I'll have like, I don't know, a week off, and I want to, I want to have you know have some drinks, and then my manager will come and go, yeah, but tomorrow you've got like your tour is done, know, know, but tomorrow you've got this, 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 and you just go, okay, I guess I just okay. will go home to bed. You know, I know, like, it's really hard. Sometimes you just want to have a night where you just go, totally. screw my voice. Right, I'm just going to have a drink. I'm going to talk <laughs> in a loud bar. And, Dude, yeah. Preaching to the choir, yeah, my friend. You know how it is. Um, okay, so what is the most spiritual experience you've ever had? Whoa, spiritual experience. Hmm. I'm, a, I'm terrible with this stuff. You can do it, whatever you want. You know, okay, it's probably, probably like a, a, a weak one, but it would be um, probably when... Uh, it's probably to do with a song. Okay. And I was watching this show called Nashville. You know that Nashville yeah, show? Course. And all of a sudden, like, I, I watched this scene and it was this really sad scene. And I took my guitar and I went to, like, the bathroom. It's where I usually write, so, you know, the reflections and stuff mm. like that. It sounds like good. And I started playing these chords, which became the chorus to a song of mine that's now going to be on my album called Half a Man. And the words just came out almost. I mean, I changed one or two words on the actual song, but. Almost like word for word and the chorus and the melody came out and the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up. That was one of those moments where I was, yeah. um, I, I blew, yeah, blew me and I was like, this is, whoa, like where did this come from? So that's probably. No, dude, that, that's the whole thing we're talking about. The yeah. whole podcast. This, we don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't got any like. I love it. No, that's yeah. good. Okay, that's, that's good. Plenty. Okay, good, that's good, plenty. good, 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 good. Um, what is the worst thing and the best thing about money? Well, Oh, okay. Well, interestingly, I don't have any money yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Dude, yeah. what's funny is I remember like when the first song hits, yeah. everybody thinks you have money yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't have money. I'm like, Where, where's yeah, the money? So, you, so, so tell me, uh, just st- still answer it. Okay. Um, 
I guess the best thing about money is I know I can't buy happiness, so that's the thing. But apparently, uh, you know, I think if it'd be nice to to have a place that you call your own, that you can kind of come back to. Sure. And and you know and create and just make yours because like the constantly moving around and renting, it's like it's a, it's a that's weird. A you don't have a home right now. I, I don't. Yeah, I just literally got rid of my the rental place that I was in. Oh. So I think the best thing about money would be to have being able to to kind of not worry about those things. Um, the worst, the worst thing about money that I don't have, uh, <laughs> um, it's just too, it's just too heavy to carry around. You know what I mean? I've just got backpacks full of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the problem um, with it. Yeah. What is the bad thing about money? I guess, I guess if that's all you're focused on, right? If, or if you're, and I, I don't think I, I consciously, consciously make an effort to like focus towards, you know, building something that's worthwhile and music that I like. Not so much going, I want to make a million dollars. Sure. Do you know what I mean? So I guess the worst thing would be if you're just driven by that. I think it Yeah, be. that it can take you off course. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, what is the biggest myth that you believed to be true about yourself that you've been able to overcome? The biggest myth about myself. Hmm. Like something that I didn't think I was... So, yeah, yeah. Either that or, or something that you're like, oh no, I'm, I know that I'm this. And then you were able to undo that in yourself. And now you, now that's not the case anymore. Wow, that's a t that's okay. Well, I'd say growing up, like I did waste a lot of opportunities in my life. Like I would, you know, just say like we had just you know good things would come your way, and I'd be like you know, you know, with you know just not focused. I'd be out with my friends, you know, sure. have drinks, whatever, and be like, I'll get to that later on. And I guess the change that the this massive change happened when I got my record deal, where I was like, all right, you're not twenty. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, a lot of guys get this start at 20 and they have years and I'm like, sure. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, like, I wasn't this workaholic. I wasn't this obsessed. Like, really? Yeah. It was like maybe, maybe a little bit leading up to it. Like I really enjoyed it and it was obsessed with songs, but I wasn't obsessed with like really chasing a dream for myself. And I just went, I'm going to throw everything at it. And I, I almost changed. Like I, this wasn't who I used to be sort of. That's like actually I was, super encouraging. Yeah. 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 You, you can, you can become this yeah. way, you know? And, um, I, I always had ideas growing up, man. Like I was like, I want to do this. I want to do that, but I never would have the follow through. And then when this opportunity came, I think then I had the tools to follow through. I had the team to yeah. kind of, but just threw myself into this where I never would before. Yeah. Where do we go when we die? Where do we go when we die? I hope somewhere. Uh, I have these things when at like, like those late at night thoughts, like once every three months where I have these like, 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 Oh God, it's coming. <laughs> it's, <sometimes, laughs> it's coming. <laughs> And nothingness forever. I just hope it's, it's not that. I hope it's not that. So I hope I'm going up there with everyone in my family. And Okay, um, so you think it's actually a place? I'd love it to be a place or I'd love it just to start again because like, it's like you got to have a goal, right? You got to have like a, at least, yeah, I think you you got to be working towards something. And I wonder if it was just like, if it's just a place that you go to and you're just there forever. I wonder if there'd be any sort of like, because life is really exciting when you're pursuing something. Sure. So Maybe I'd like it to be a place, but I wouldn't want to know it was a place. But I'd want all everyone to be there again. Again. Even if I didn't know them. To learn, to meet them again or something. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, finally, what do you think your purpose is in the world? Like your unique yeah. purpose. Like why are you here? Yeah, yeah. Not um, like why are we all here, but why are you? Yeah. Um, I guess, I mean, this might not be a good thing to say, but I, I, I know for me, I never think that I have like, a super important opinion on, uh, you know, what, how I believe, think about, you know, say politics or like what I think about this or food or like, you know what I mean? Like I'm very much like, I just want to write really good songs and I want, um, I just want to, people to like them and I want people to feel something from the songs and I'm not writing them from that place of like, what is this? I want to write a song to make them. I sort of write it from a selfish place. Like, you know, what, what's real to me. And, but I want, the secondary thing is for people to feel it and to know they're not alone um, mm. and, and, and just write really good stuff to inspire other people, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like that's it's pretty, it. pretty simple. <laughs> and hopefully to have like, you know, a family and like, you know, to, to you know, to yeah, bring a whole team of people with me that I really like and we can all do well together. Be all awesome. together. Yeah. I love it, man. Dude, thank you so much for coming and being a part of this. This is great, man. You're this the best. Awesome. No, it's my and, first uh, podcast. So. I got to come out and see you. I'll come. I'll come, come to one of these it. shows. I'll come to one of the shows, and then I'm gonna yeah. want to come kick it with you in Australia. Let's, uh, dude, hundred percent. I'm in. 100%. You're in Sydney. I'm in Sydney. Fantastic. So, man. Thank thanks, you so man. Much. Tell me your story, but don't leave the good parts out.